first saw the mm. images and the videos of the bridge collapsing, what were your thoughts? What's running through your mind? Well, uh, uh, you know, like uh, like many, I first saw this in. Uh, let me start over. Yeah, you've um, even recorded an interview. <laughs> Like a lot of Americans, uh, I first saw these images online and was absolutely shocked by them. It was the middle of the night, and then uh, pretty soon I was on the phone with uh, the governor of Maryland, the mayor of Baltimore, and the White House to talk about what we were going to do next. Uh, later on, at the invitation of the governor, uh, I saw the site itself. Uh, was, I really can't describe what it was like to be standing at the water's edge looking at this absolutely massive bridge in wreckage and uh, that absolutely massive ship that struck uh, the pier holding up that bridge and took it out. Uh, the, the thing I'm going to remember most, though, is the teamwork that I saw on the ground. One of the worst things you could ever imagine, but one of the it really brought out the best in so many of the people, first responders, firefighters, divers, rescuers, Coast Guard, you name it, so many people from so many different uh, agencies and some who would have volunteered and come in to help. Uh, all of which was helping to uh, do everything they could to save lives and to begin that road to recovery. So then going off of that, where are things in terms of the road to recovery? What's being done to begin the cleanup process and the rebuilding process? Well, the process has really moved now from the search and rescue phase to the recovery and increasingly reconstruction phase. Uh, that is not going to be quick or simple or easy. Now, we're talking about a bridge that took about five years to build in the first place, and we still don't know everything we need to know about the condition of the portions of the bridge that are still standing. As more of that information comes in, we'll have more information to go off in terms of the reconstruction. That's going to be led by the Maryland Department of Transportation, but we as a department are uh, going to provide funding to get that done. Uh, as a matter of fact, my department has already approved just today about $60 million to help with demolition, uh, detours, uh, debris removal, reconstruction, pretty much anything you can think of to help get back to normal. The other big issue is the port, which is completely inaccessible uh, to vessel traffic and getting that wreckage cleared out so the port can reopen. It's not yet clear how long that's going to take. So then what has the impact been on the supply chain and what is your department doing to try to mitigate any more disruption? Earlier today, I convened a meeting of about 100 different players from across our supply chains, ports, shippers, cargo owners, railroads, truckers, everybody whose world is changing now uh, because of what happened to this significant port, port that really matters to the region and to the whole country. Uh, but a lot of people are stepping up to help. Uh, different ports up and down the East Coast are absorbing some of the container traffic that can't make it into Baltimore right now. Uh, truckers and, and railroads are working on how to surge their capacity to move around the goods that, that uh, at least temporarily, uh, are going to be have, uh, having to travel on a different basis. Uh, so again, you're seeing a lot of coordination, a lot of teamwork, but it's going to be a real challenge. This is the top vehicle handling port in the United States. Uh, everything from getting uh, imported cars to exporting our uh, farm equipment, a lot of high and heavy tractor equipment that we're proud to be uh, sending out to the rest of the world and that supports a lot of jobs in the American heartland. So we really want to get that back up and running as quickly as we can. And when you were in Baltimore, were you able to talk with some residents who either maybe use this bridge every day or who are being directly impacted by this collapse? Yeah, I talked to a lot of people who, uh, uh, first of all, just talked about uh, seeing this bridge collapse. you got to understand this is a part of the Baltimore skyline, uh, and it's been there since the 70s. So uh, most people in that region, the mayor was telling me how uh, he, he never knew Baltimore without that bridge. Uh, and the county executive was telling me he commutes over it every day uh, just to get to work. Uh, so many lives are changed and, uh, uh, and really shaken by what happened. But uh, again, I've also seen the spirit of a city that is determined to put itself back together. And the president has been very focused on making sure they get the support that they need. Mm -hmm. So I know when this happened, a lot of residents in northern Michigan thought, okay, well, we have the Mackinac Bridge. And the Mackinac Br Bridge, I believe, is about 20 years older than the Francis Scott Key Bridge. Should folks be worried that something like this could happen to a bridge like the Mackinac Bridge? This was a, a really extraordinary and rare event, a direct hit from uh, a, a vessel of a, a class called Neo Panamax, which means uh, uh, one of the larger ships that can go through the Panama Canal, about 1,000 feet. To put that in perspective, is about the size of the Chrysler building. Uh, it is uh, obviously not something that, uh, that you would ever expect to happen. Uh, and you know, responding to the last disaster that has happened is always how we prepare uh, for the next thing that could happen. And so I think any 
uh, anyone who's involved in bridge design or uh, uh, maritime safety is going to look closely for the results of the NTSB investigation uh, to see what we can learn to make what is generally an extraordinarily safe uh, system even safer across the United States. So what would you say for people who maybe now are a little more nervous to cross bridges like the Mackinac Bridge or who are maybe losing a little bit of faith in our country's infrastructure? Well, this is one of the reasons why President Biden pushed so hard to get the infrastructure package done in the first place. Uh, you know, we had uh, many situations around the country different from this shocking event where bridges, uh, in some ways even more shockingly, uh, just collapsed. Uh, now, again, that's extremely rare, but we know that, that we need to reinforce our bridges with the investment that they need. Uh, I was just at a bridge in the Pacific Northwest that's more than 100 years old. We are finally able to bring the funding to replace it thanks to that infrastructure package. I think that's one of the reasons why a lot of Republicans uh, crossed the aisle to work with uh, Democrats, work with President Biden, work with me and others uh, to get that done. We know that when our roads and bridges, and for that matter, our railroads and our ports get the investment that they need, uh, that's not just good for the economy, that's also good for safety. And kind of switching gears here to Northern Michigan, um, your department recently awarded MDOT a grant for the West Bay um, Revitalization Project right down the hill here. It's something that a lot of people Locals, tourists, people are driving, people are walking. Why is it important to update this corridor? You know, West Bayshore Drive is a treasure. It is something that uh, draws so many tourists and means so much to so many residents around here, uh, including me and, and my family. And we need to make sure that it's in better shape. Uh, so our department was proud to award $14 million to MDOT uh, to help get uh, a portion of this road improved uh, in Grand Traverse and Leelanau counties. That includes uh, some unglamorous things like sewer and drainage improvements that are actually really important for the long-term life of the road. Also just recent surfacing it. If you know, if you drive it, you know uh, that it needs some work. And a roundabout where M72 and M22 meet. And that's really about safety. We uh, estimate that a number of crashes can be prevented through a safer roadway design. That's important for vehicles, also important for pedestrians and bicyclists who uh, in those summer, spring and summer months that are coming soon around here, uh, take advantage of the natural beauty of the bay. We want to make sure that there's the safest possible design so that pedestrians uh, cyclists and vehicles are safe. Mm. Anything else you want to mention about any projects, things happening here in northern Michigan? You know, Michigan is a state that really just screams infrastructure, uh, whether we're talking about uh, airports, large and small, uh, whether we're talking about uh, the roads and bridges here, uh, or, or the ports. Uh, you know, when you, you talk about ports, you often hear about Baltimore or Los Angeles and Long Beach. Uh, we've actually been supporting a number of port operations uh, in northern Michigan, from Alpena to Marquette, uh, that maybe aren't as well known nationally, but everybody around here knows how important they are economically, and they really matter to supply chains across the country.